Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Mariana and today I'll read from a book titled The Ludwig Leo Umlauf Tanks Vibe, edited by Philip Kurz and uh, Wusterrott Stiftung and published by Spectre Books. The volume was designed by Chinese graphic designer Sai Yu Mao and it has a beautiful soft cover, section sewn binding and it was printed in Germany by DZA. The Umlauf Tank Zwei, or Circulation Tank 2, is a facility for testing models of ships' hulls in a steady current of water. What sounds a little arcane actually relies on the same simple principle as a wind tunnel. A stationary model is enveloped by air or water currents and its performance examined. The circulation tank's testing section is 11 meters long, 5 meters wide and 3 meters deep and forms the heart of the five-story blue-sided laboratory on top of the structure. Water flows uh, through the testing section at speeds of up to 10 meters per second as it is pumped around the huge pink uh, ring-shaped pipe. Some 3,500 cubic meters of water are borne by this pipe, 120 meters long and up to 8 meters wide. At its narrowest point, two marine diesel engines generating 5,500 horsepower between them drive a propeller with a diameter of 3.5 meters and a controllable pitch. This ensures that the water speed uh, remains constant. The facility's unusual dimensions owe to its being equipped uh, for cavitation testing, which studies the effects of the bubbles that form and burst on the surface of objects moving rapidly through water. Cavitation is a problem in shipbuilding and mechanical engineering. Its bubbles can damage a ship's propellers, turbines and pumps. Crucially, the propeller powering the facility has to be at least 10 meters below the testing section, so that it isn't damaged by cavitation itself. This physical necessity was instrumental in shaping the Unlauf tank's ring-shaped pipe and its monumental verticality. Both follow the building's function with an almost mathematical stringency. But instead of simply becoming an engineering structure, the circulation tank became a piece of complex architecture thanks to one man, the Umlauf tank's architect Ludwig Leo. It is no secret that Leo did not conceive the Umlauf tank. The younger maritime engineer Christian Bus projected the facility in the mid-1960s. In 1958, he was working in Berlin for the VWS, the Laboratory for Hydraulics and Shipbuilding. The VWS already had a circulation tank, based on an older facility that had been one of the first ever built. Boost took it upon himself to design a new circulation tank that did more than add only a few seconds to experimental observations. Under the VWS ensuing uh, guidance, Boost ended up designing the largest facility of its kind in the world. But West Berlin's young director of urban development had reservations. Indeed, he was so unenthusiastic about Boo's architectural solo effort that he soon organized a small informal competition between three Berlin architects to find an artistic director for the project. The winner was Ludwig Leo. Although Leo took over some of Boo's responsibilities, a shared fascination for technical connections and unconventional solutions allowed the two to get along well and work together productively. Leo was highly sensitive to two things. Firstly, he was aware that the design demanded a complex interplay of visibility and mystification. Secondly, he realized the circulation tank had to be understood as an architectural challenge, and not simply a technical one, precisely because the Unlauf tank was a technical facility. Leo's design approach was as simple as it was obvious. He uncovered the huge ring-shaped pipe and conceived the laboratory as a largely closed box that he placed on top of the pipe. To prevent experiment hampering temperature fluctuations of the water in the system, he simply sprayed a 4 cm thick layer of polyurethane insulating foam onto the pipe and then painted it pink. A grid of uh, dark green I-beams provided the structural framework of the plant. 
Lastly, Leo gave the umlauf tank a concrete foundation in the shape of a ship's hull, with a small bow at the front and an aftercastle seen on all sailing ships at the rear. It in turn provided room for the engine room. While Boos had proposed a building that was as slow and transparent as possible, Leo went the opposite direction. He focused on monumentality and corporeality and took seriously the preference of the scientists to be able to work undisturbed. The conspicuousness of the gigantic ring-shaped pipe and the almost windowless laboratory structure, coy about revealing even how many floors it has, creates a complex interplay of revelation and obfuscation, of understanding and not understanding. The art historian Heinrich Klotz aptly said of this strange interplay. The architecture of the technical facility was made to speak although hardly anyone understands what it is talking about. Not surprisingly, Klotz, the leading theoretician of postmodernism in Germany, came to propound a semiotic interpretation of the building and place it in the tradition of early postmodernism. His reading is confirmed by the genesis of Leo's design. To get a building permit, the architect submitted a first draft uh, to the building authorities of West Berlin's Tiergarten district on 11 October 1967. It largely corresponded to the building that was then built, and officially opened in 1974. But the small changes that Leo made in the course of the design process proved essential. They are illuminating, they show the architect's very conscious creative shift one away from a mere aesthetic staging of the technical facility and towards bestowing the building with a complex multiple readability. The most conspicuous illustration of this shift is the foundation. Leo initially thought a pile of foundation would be needed, but he quickly embraced a more formal foundation, which would sit as a plinth just above ground level and serves uh, as a reservoir in the event that the main pipe had to be drained. In his first draft, Leo worked with relatively large windows, but made sure that the innermost working spaces could not be seen from the outside. In the subsequent planning stages, he reduced the windows to a few rows of small square openings that perplexingly failed uh, to give the facade any sense of scale. Today, they still seem to discourage gazes from outside and give observers the false impression that the interior of the blue structure above the huge pipe is dark and uninviting. The facade adds to the mystification of science but simultaneously also reflects the functional requirements and necessities of the interior. These rows of windows that seem so inauspicious from the outside are actually located with care and precision, giving the scientists and technicians inside spectacular views of the city from their desks. And more window openings in the facade were not necessary, as a long row of large skylights in the roof creates a bright and friendly atmosphere in the lab space. The building as a whole awakens countless associations, even in viewers who have no particular aesthetic training. Leo played with bold motifs, reduction, exaggeration, bold color and scale with utter sincerity. Leo's recourse to the superficial aesthetic strategies of the pop art must also be understood as a response to the practical limitations of his role in the planning process. Although he was its artistic director, the project offered him few creative possibilities, so he made maximum and intelligent use of the few that he had. In recent years, the structure had retreated ever more behind the tear garden's plentiful foliage. Its blue had faded to gray, and rusty streaks had eaten into the pink. The longer it was neglected, the more it became one with its surroundings. These days, the building is resplendent again in its original colors of deep blue and pert pink. No longer crouching on its island in the canal, the Umlauf tank is once again the self-confident adversary of the austere construction across the road. The Nazis built what today is called Ensrauter House, home to the German government's federal office for building and regional planning. Viewed from this side, the Umlauf tank looks like a renegade of architectural history. It is a blue and pink marvel, 
a reminder that there are alternatives to the constraints of urban development in all its conservative and unbending iterations. A marvel that defies classification as postmodern and comparison with other styles or buildings. Architects and planners of German government buildings surely pass by this building every day. And yet, decades of federal construction projects leave no impression that they have taken proper note of it. To be fair, the Umlauf tank did slip from public awareness, quite possibly long before it started falling into disrepair. The refurbishment of the circulation tank will hopefully change that. The Umlauf tank has reclaimed its rightful prominence in the urban space and spatial vistas of uh, Berlin. But the building's architectural significance has changed just like the course of the research conducted inside. After its refurbishment, the Umlauf tank no longer simply evokes uh, the power of the eminently new, as much as it rekindles a vibrant awareness that it is always possible to do things differently. Ludwig Leo was a fascinating architect and I encourage you to have a look at this book at your local bookstore. I hope this video was useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.